welcome back to uh, Joystick and Mouse video game news reviews for all you filthy casuals out there. I'm Don. I go by Diddy in the gaming community. With me this evening is Jay Dimes. What's going on? So how you been doing, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. Working. Building. Uh, building new shelving. I hear that. Uh, for. For a comic book? Okay, so how many comic books do you have that you need new shelving for? Uh, I have about, I don't know, about 4,500 comics. Wow. wow. And they're in about they're in about 12 boxes. Like Baker's boxes or? No, so, the, well, these, well, the, they're called drawer boxes, and they're called that because they come with, like, like something that looks kind of similar to a banking box without a lid, but longer. Uh-huh. And then these drawer boxes have shells, shells that you can kind of pull them in and out like a drawer. Oh wow! Uh, no, so it I makes it I've easy to, it. it makes it easier to get to things. Um, but the last rack I had said that it would handle enough weight, and and it failed miserably. <laughs> It didn't fail catastrophically say, because but... the because it didn't break. But I remember Vanessa and I were at her cousin's house one day, and I'm looking at Facebook, and in one of my uh, comic book groups, there was a guy talking about waking up and coming out, you know, into his room or whatever, and all of his comics were like all over the floor. Oh man! And he had the exact same rack that I did. Oh, uh, but oh. it had like broken catastrophically and just sent everything flying. I I can imagine that would be horrendous to have yeah comic books everywhere. So the shelves had started to sag in the center, and I had to, I was like, ah, we're gonna need to do something different. Um, so I bought like this shelf is supposed to take a thousand pounds per shelf. Oh wow! So did you go to um? Did you go to um? Not Home Depot. Jeez. Uh, I did go to Home Depot. Oh, well, I was thinking Costco. Remember in Costco and they got those like steel yes. shelves with like the three quarter inch board that goes on it. That yeah, yeah, yeah. I did look at one of those, but the shelf that they had was too long. Um, even this oh. one that I bought is about is probably about five inches long, five or six inches longer or wider, I should say than the previous one the that one that they had at costco would have been too big because i i've thought about getting those for the garage because those are really nice and they'll hold just about anything the thing i don't like about the one at costco is that it's just the racks and they give you the, the three quarter inch board i don't think they give you the wire brace underneath of it oh so this one has wire shelving but what I think I'm going to do at some point when the price of plyboard oh, uh, comes back down is I'm going to cut some wooden, some wood plyboard sheets to fit in there. Oh, yeah, that'll make it. And embrace it a little bit more. Yeah. But yeah. I think we should be fine. I think I, I think it'll be I think we'll be all right. Yeah, I, I hear you. man. Oh, my God. We were we went to the other um home renovation center the other day and uh and i was i was flabbergasted i was gonna get i put some so we went to reshop which is like the um habitat for humanity when they pull out old cabinets and stuff Mm -hmm. they sell them and you can just go in there you can just go in there and buy like old cabinets and stuff and so i've never heard of this place reshop yeah it's, it's reshop rehome or Something like that. Um, so I went in just I I paid like twenty five dollars for these two cabinets, but they didn't have any shelves in them. So <laughs> I I went to to Lowe's and I was just gonna get some plywood and and cut. Kind of, oh my god, I couldn't believe what a sheet of plywood cost. I was like, you know, I don't need shelves that bad. <laughs> and, yeah, plywood. And, everything expensive oh, right like, now. Holy crap! Everything um, prefab is pricey. Yep, I hear you, man. Yeah, fortunately, computer parts have started to come down a little bit. I uh, I finally finished putting mine back together after uh, catastrophic water cooling failures. 
But yeah, uh, listen, we're going we're, we're gonna to stop with this water coolerness, right? We're no more water cooling. I'm done. I I I, I did it. I had my time. I'm the back there. Cool. It's, I would it's just fine. like to say, years ago, I said this was a bad idea. You did. You did. You did. Water and computers, I don't believe, go together. <laughs> well, it's funny because it does. It still has a semblance of water cooling in it. Because for the processor, I got an AIO, which acts technically is liquid cooled, but it comes self contained. You don't put any liquid in it. It's got liquid in yeah, it, and it's a radiator. I don't know if I trust that either. I don't but, know if I trust that either. Uh, supposedly, they're, they're pretty good. And the one I got from Corsair, it gets really good reviews. So hopefully, <laughs> finger trust. <laughs> no problems with that one. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't want to hear about you having to take your thing apart again. No, taking it apart. It's there for for as long as it keeps on running. <laughs> With pretty lights. It has all pretty lights. I posted it on Twitter. People people like the lights. So um, alrighty, let's get into uh let's get into the podcast here. So you get a development studio, and you get a development studio. Everybody gets a development studio. At least that's what it felt like. Felt like an Oprah Christmas special episode lately in the video game world. Let's dig into the latest studio acquisition and see what that means for gamers, workers, and the industry as a whole on this episode of Joystick and Mouse. So, Tim, why don't you take the first one and and <laughs> let us know what you think of this those. week? Wow. Sony purchased Bungie for three point six billion dollars. This comes on the heels of the Take Two buyout of Zynga, and of course, the purchase of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft. What does this mean, and how does this affect us, the gamers? And what does it mean for the industry at large? Uh, and also, just to point out, uh, Zynga, their big property is Farmville, which is a massive mobile game. Uh, you know. I- I was not very impressed with Sony buying Bungie. And I think a lot of it had to do with that. It just felt like Sony had to do something, right? Um, I don't know if doing bun- buying Bungie moves the needle for them. It's funny that you say that because I almost... I had almost exactly the same reaction. I'm like, why? What 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 possibly does that buy Sony? And it, it was almost like, well, Microsoft bought somebody and and uh, uh Take Two bought somebody. Oh, we have to buy somebody too. And like they don't have the cash that Microsoft does. Yeah, three point six billion is a lot of money. They don't have the cash that, that Take Two does. Um yeah, it's like you just spent three point six billion dollars for a company that you don't really need. You know, here's something I wondered, and I haven't heard anybody bring this up, but I, I wonder if this sale was more about Bungie than it was about Sony. Like. Was it Sony buying Bungie or did Bungie want to be bought? So do you think they need like the influx of money to I think they might need the money, they might need the infrastructure. You know, maybe maybe uh Destiny's not really selling enough for them. Uh so they might need the resources. I mean, you know, Bungie, when they were making when they were making Halo, you know, that was fully covered and done by Microsoft, right? They didn't really have to. I mean, th- they weren't owned by Microsoft, but Microsoft was paying for Halo. True. I guess Microsoft was backing the development of it. Right. Through Bungie. Yeah. And, and now they, you know, they struck out on their own and they're making their own game. And I just wonder if, you know, are they moving enough units? I don't know that many Destiny players. I don't, so, know, I don't know very many Destiny players either. And and really, that's Bungie's only real... It's their only game. Game. 
that they're doing right now. Yep. Yes, they have the experience of of stuff with of Halo and and some other smaller games, but yeah, that's really all they got. And we know that Destiny is not becoming a Sony exclusive. They're just they can't. They they w- I don't think they'd ever do that. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure what they were hoping to get out of this. Yeah, so that's, you know, it's funny you say that because, <laughs> you know, Sony could come out and say, oh, well, we're only going to make Destiny for for PlayStation. But then you run the risk of Microsoft being like, well, we're just going to make Call of Duty for Xbox. And I don't think that's the bear that you want to poke. Yeah, yeah, that's not the hill you want to die on. That's right. That's so, the, uh... yeah, I don't know. What what will be interesting is whether or not Sony will continue to support cross-platform play. Because they've been notoriously been wishy-washy about that. But I believe Destiny plays cross-platform. Yes, it does. Yep. So will they will they keep that up? Um they can't, with... uh, they, they can't make it exclusive because they'd lose three quarters of their base. They just... Well, no, no, no. I don't mean make it exclusive. I just mean, will they continue to allow Sony oh, players and X- Xbox players play together? Oh, if you're playing on Xbox, you can only play on Xbox for Destiny. Uh, yeah, wow. Can't imagine. So do you, th- do you think that mm, this hampers the creativity? How do How do people like Steam stay in business now? I mean, you know, because they were, they're sort of the de facto indie distribution uh, platform. And, and man, if all these companies, I, I don't, I'm not sure how they're going to compete. I think, well, I think Steam is in a unique place where they know, and everybody else knows, that they are the big... marketplace but you know they're i mean and they're having their um competition too with epic and yeah i mean i guess really epic well it's sort of microsoft i i can see i see where i think maybe microsoft game pass might start to pull in some of those um am i know that amazon is looking at that also uh amazon's looking at their um Oh, what the hell is the uh, the thing that they just started? I know. Well, okay. So being a developer, I get a lot of these um, developer newsletters. And I know Amazon just put out something about their their development engine, that they were looking for people to do games that they were going to sponsor development of those games in their platform. Listen, and yeah. Yeah, and they can afford. I mean, that's the thing about them. I can't remember. The they name can of that. really afford to do whatever. It's not elevator. It's something like that, though. <laughs> Your game development mm-hmm. platform. Yeah, I, I, I. This concerns me that all the game companies are getting bought up by the four giants, right? The four, the four big ones. There's, you know, it's Tencent and. Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo. And, you know, uh. I don't mind it though. Like, and, you know, these aren't hostile takeovers. You know what I mean? Like, they're not, but these developers are selling because either they want the money or. Well, it's, it's exceptionally hard to develop a video game today. Yeah. Uh, It's, it's, very expensive and if you don't have a hit it's really hard to make your money back to make anything at it so yep yeah these companies can't afford to have one that doesn't hit quite as hard but then you also you get their backing which makes it a little bit more um accessible and gives it a little bit more hype coming out and maybe more people will try it so yeah, I guess I can see both sides of that that coin there. Yeah, I, I mean, overall, I, I think it. I think it'll be. 
I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be yeah. okay. I, I'm, I'm hoping that, that we don't lose, you know, um, the Goose Games and the and the Stardew Valleys of the world. Because I of think this. I think the bigger issue would be if they were buying these companies and then also taking the content away from other providers. But that doesn't seem to be what anyone is doing up to this point. Doesn't I guess that doesn't be. mean that they won't do it, but it doesn't seem like that's what's been done yet. So yeah, we'll have to see. One of the things, actually, one of the things I do like a bit about it is it does seem like they're letting the development shops alone. Yeah. It, it, it seems like, all right, you guys go keep doing that game and we'll check in every once in a while. And, and if you need something, let us know. Uh, which I think is a good thing. Um, but that sort of leads into, you know, there's been a, a whole bunch of news lately about what the gaming industry is that video game production industry is actually like. So now that these companies are buying into the smaller developers, will that change anything? Will it change the way that games are being developed? Will it change some of the movements that have been happening? Because there was a an article this this week, um, how Raven Software, which is a subsidiary of Blizzard Activision, Microsoft after not Microsoft per se, but you know they they did some things to try and neutralize the forming of the union and because it was okay so back up raven software their qa department unionized last month they put in a formal request filled out all the paperwork with the state and formed a union of the qa workers within within the um software company the company then came down and said all right Instead of being one organization under this company, we're going to spread you out throughout the different teams so that the quest designers would have their own QA, the, you know, graphics department have their own QA, the, this is classic union busting techniques. So I wonder if some of the larger companies getting involved will change what's happening within these companies and the movements? Um, I don't, you know, I don't know. This, uh, so in larger companies, I mean, it almost feels like it should do the opposite. Like it should galvanize more people because you're now putting what was a very kind of a smaller group of folks into a larger community of people to pull from, for those efforts, efforts. I, I guess it would really depend on like what has been the desire for unionization at these other companies or in the industry as a whole, right? Like we know, and and because we know at Blizzard, it came about for specific reasons having to do with, you know, culture and the treatment of employees, right? But if you're working at Microsoft and you're not really feeling that, right? Microsoft, though, notoriously is anti-union. Well, I th- listen, I don't know of any companies that are pro. <laughs> That's true, too. That's, <laughs> that is true. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's not cost-effective for them. It's not, doesn't make them lean and agile. And, you know, in today's world, that is that is the way it is. Agile is, is king. Nobody wants to sit down and collectively bargain anything. Right, yeah, I asked Major League Baseball. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I wonder if I were an employee in one of those companies, would I maybe take a step back and say, let's see how this goes. 
the articles are fascinating they'll be in the show notes you make sure you go read them these two articles about about the uh uh about the companies and forming the unions and and organizing the employees are there it it's fascinating reads they're really really interesting um so yeah, I think I think I think they're good. Re I'm not sure. I have very mixed feelings about this one, because on the one hand, I am all for inclusion and treating your employees right. And having been on projects where it's not been done well, and <laughs> been on you know where you didn't have any tools and where you were under a deadline all the time, and, you know, and and then on other projects where you know, you had all the support and all the tools and, oh, you need something? Sure, we'll get that for you. Yep. I, I've been on both sides of it as a developer. And and I can tell you, one is a whole lot less stressful than the other. Right. Um, you know, so I, I, I hope, my hope is that a lot of, because this isn't just Activision Blizzard. They're, they're the poster child for it because they have, that's who the suit was brought against. But this is everywhere. I mean, yeah, I mean, we've, we've heard about this at Rockstar. We've heard about this at Riot Games. We've heard about this at you know um, Bethesda. We've heard about this at you know uh, many, many, many companies throughout the industry. And I think any male-dominated industry, I think you might find some of that. Um, but it seems to be even more prevalent in the gaming. Industry. Listen, I would say, mm -hmm. remember the debacle that was L.A. Noir. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, I've saved your note. <laughs> she apparently thought see, I was talking to see, her. See, even, even she thinks that this is yeah. really bad. Um, yeah, I... Uh, yeah, I think there are some things... And Well, and, and listen, in some ways, Activision and Blizzard have kind of debunked this, but... I think there are some things that by and large are just not allowed to occur in large corporate spaces. Right. Activision Blizzard have kind of <laughs> I mean, I guess, you know, they're not of the size of a Microsoft or Google. I mean, they're a big company, they bring in lots of money, but I guess corporately they are not of that size. Um or Sony for that matter. So I think there are a lot of things that probably went on there that just would have never happened because those companies are so big, so publicly traded, they're so blue chip they would have just never allowed it to occur. They wouldn't want to deal with the PR fallout. Like the PR fallout in and of itself is terrible. I mean, think about Amazon. You know, Amazon has had all that bad press about unionization and the way those workers are, are treated. But it only has only gone so far. And still, I don't think any of it sounds as bad as what has occurred at Blizzard. That's that's true, and Blizzard isn't that big of a company. Blizzard's what ten thousand employees or something like that, if that, and that's worldwide. I mean, I feel like maybe they make a disproportionate amount of money to their employee yeah, size. They're they're not a large company. Uh, I mean, Microsoft is Jesus. They're they've got to be well over a hundred thousand employees. So, you, you know, hopefully some of that stuff trickles down. Um, I, even with like Bungie, um, Sony's a huge company. I can guarantee you that stuff doesn't go on at Sony. You know, it wouldn't, wouldn't just wouldn't be allowed. That, like you said, the publicity is bad. They won't, they won't put up with that. You know, I don't. You know, I and and sort of on this this thing, are we really surprised that a company run by Kotick? tried to bust up a union no no <laughs> i mean no yeah that's the one that really sort of surprises me about the whole thing is he gets to stay yeah i mean that's a that's a whole different issue 
of how someone with that attitude and that perspective got into that job and was allowed to stay for as long as they were. Yeah. Yeah, it's whole yeah, whole different thing, but it's a mess. They have a mess. It is. Um yep, hopefully hopefully that it gets cleaned up. I hope I hope that uh this is the beginning of the change. Yeah. Just like the dolphins. Hopefully this is the beginning of the of the new new order. Nah, I think y'all hired a coach that's not gonna be terribly great. But we'll see. Oh, you never know. Man. God, those guys. They just kill me. Should have kept the coach ahead. I I personally believe so, but in you know <laughs> I don't know. These owners do what they want to do. Yeah, they do. All right, man. You got the next one? Yep. Um, Halo is getting a TV series. And it should be glorious. Yeah. But why do we have a non-blue Cortana? I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't... First, why did it take so damn long to get a Halo? Listen, I'm still not... I am still not convinced that that show is going to happen. Really? Nope. I mean, we had eight seasons. We've been talking about a Halo ago. TV show for, Halo? for a decade. We have been talking about this thing for a decade. It's on Paramount Plus now, but I feel like at one point it was supposed to be on some other cable channel. There, there was supposed to be one that was like a streamable show on the Microsoft, like on the Xbox. Who knows? I remember Who that. Knows? I remember. I remember them saying that they were going to put out shorts. Um. Yeah, wasn't Tony Xbox. Scott supposed to do one? Yes, wasn't yes. Scott Brothers was supposed to do it? And then there was something about Spielberg um, well, well, doing Spielberg, one. Spielberg signed on for this one originally. And then and is he not doing this one and anymore? he's not doing it now. I, You know, I... Uh, yeah, see, it, it's even in the article. Microsoft has been talking about a Halo TV show for a decade. For a decade. So I'll, right. I will believe it when it happens. I am... I tell you what I'm surprised at. That I, well, I know if, I know three of the actors that they have said, or at least I know them by name. Uh, maybe I'll know some of them when I see them. But I am surprised that this is a show where the actors are skewing as old as they were. I would have thought hmm. you might go with a younger cast and do younger versions and give yourself a little more runway. But... Uh, I mean, Pablo Schreiber is not like he might. Be, I guess he's probably in his mid forties, maybe. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I love Pablo Schreiber too. He's been in yeah, he's... two things that I really got: God of the, um, not God of War, uh, American <laughs> Gods. He was in the American Gods TV show, and he was also in Den of Thieves, which I think is a very underrated movie. I've no, I haven't seen Den of Thieves. Den of Thieves is really good. It's like Heat on Speed. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I mean... Oh, he's 43. Okay, he's a little older than I thought. Um, isn't... Well... So it's weird, because Master Chief has been around forever, right? But... Yeah. You know, is he a little older, a little more grizzled, a little more... You know been through the ringer but i'm a little surprised that the yeah i i i agree with you that i'm a little surprised that the, the other actors are skewing a little older too yeah i mean um, listen i love pablo shriver i love uh l mcpherson uh i think she played the wife on californication uh so right yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. pablo was also in 13 hours which was a great movie i don't know if you've ever seen that I have not seen that. 13, is, 13 Hours is the movie about uh, Benghazi. Oh, oh, actually, yes, I have seen it, too. Yeah, I have. Great movie. Great movie. Um, but, yeah, I uh, I mean, I'm going to watch it. Oh, God. I'm yes. here for it. Yep, I will absolutely watch it. It looks so good. Now, the big kerfluffle was that 
they showed a picture of Cortana. And, and actually, a lot of people didn't catch that that was Cortana because she wasn't blue. <laughs> because, because in, the, in, in all the games, she's a hologram. She's not really, a, you know, she doesn't project as a real person. She projects as a hologram all the time. So I'm a little surprised that they didn't do that and they made her look more like a real person. Yeah, I'm tr I didn't see where they showed her. Oh. Oh no, no, no. McCullen is a scientist. I haven't I I'm playing the the trailer. Mm -hmm. But I haven't gotten to the part where they show Cortana yet. It's, uh, it's near. I mean, they show. Oh, yeah. Well, so, all right. Here's what I think is interesting. They do make her look kind of like she does in the game. Like, she's not a human, like, walking on the floor. It's like she's still like a floaty right. kind of haloed. Sort entity of, and they do f make it fuzzy and right yeah, yeah but she's not blue yeah you know she's she looks like she's of asian descent mm -hmm. um oh my god yeah. twitter lost its freaking mind <laughs> it, I, I, listen that doesn't are we that doesn't bother that twitter, me we well, twitter, twitter loses twitter their mind about everything their mind about anything <laughs> you know this is what i will say if it's a show where they're trying to get like a PG-13 rating. One of the reasons they may not have gone for the full blue is so that they don't have to argue about with people about whether or not she's clothed. Oh. Because in the in this preview, yeah. you can clearly tell she's wearing clothes. And in the video game, that has I remember I had a Funko Pop of Cortana sitting on my desk at work. Mm -hmm. It was blue, and I remember like somebody came in and made a joke about me having a a naked lady <laughs> on my desk. And I was like, "It's Cortana." Yeah, she... yes, I agree. Yeah, it's sort of like um, um, crap. What's the X Men? Oh, Mystique. Yes, it's yeah. sort of like yeah. Mystique. You know, everybody sort of yeah. says, "Is Mystique wearing thing. clothes?" Is she I don't wearing know. Clothes? Is she not? Wearing I don't clothes? think so. I don't think she's actually wearing clothes. Yeah, and I think you know, Cortana's always sort of been the same way did, did they just forget to program that or what yeah you know so uh yeah i don't know i'm not mad about it i listen i'm i'm much more concerned about whether this show actually happens than i am about her being blue i don't know they put the trailer out during during an nfl football game they sort of have to do it now don't they that's true that's true that's a lot of money to put out for a show that you're that's not guaranteed so yeah the show's coming when is it coming who knows but it's coming yeah well yeah true that i mean god knows when we'll actually actually see the uh the episodes but but who knows so hopefully that hopefully it's good hopefully it's not terrible yeah. Yeah, nobody's got time for terrible TV shows. No. We have enough of those going on. All right. So, and another little um small story. I I was I forget what I was looking at. I was reading about something else completely doing having to do with Japan. And and I ran across this. It's an end of an era of sorts. If you've ever been in an arcade, some of the greatest arcade games were created by Sega. Sega is getting out of the arcade game business. They're not. That's craziness. They're not making. It's not that they're going to stop making games. They're going to stop making the arcade cabinets and the games themselves that that you put up in an arcade. And I can remember. A lot, a lot, a lot of quarters <laughs> went into Sega games when I was playing them. Uh, I, God, I, I don't know. I don't even want to know how many quarters I put into Duck Hunt. I, I mean, just 
endless hours playing games like that. Uh, you know, especially the racing games. There's racing games were fantastic. It's an oddity to me, though, because they're exiting in a time when I feel like arcades are coming back. I was thinking that too. It's it's like arcades are starting to make a comeback, and and actually, well, I, you know, places like Dave and Buster's, and yeah. there's a new one over by us called Funland, and well, Funland's not new though. Well, I know Funland, there are more of them, but they just yeah. opened this one not too long ago. We used to do Will's birthday parties at at Funland down in uh, Central Park in Fredericksburg. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I feel like they're making a comeback now. The games are bigger and better and you know and they're yeah. immersive and you get surround screens and and that kind of thing but sega makes those style caps yeah they do yeah because they had duck hunt duck hunt was yeah. used to used to be able to stand in it and you had like three screens around you and you picked mm -hmm. up the right you know the rifle and, and that was there's actually a great halo game that they have at dave and buster's and they might have it. There's a new arcade that they opened up at Potomac Mills. Um, and I can't think of the name of it, but we've taken Will. Oh, that. right. Yeah. And they've got, and, and the funny thing about that, that place is amazing. They have a full bowling alley in there. Oh, really? Oh, and a full that. arcade. Yeah. Cool. And they've got a section of the arcade that's just like the Japanese style stuff. So like all like the, the dancing mm -hmm. games. Um, and they serve food. And it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, the they have now, like karaoke right? rooms that you can rent out. It's, it's great. And so, yeah, I just find it odd. I need them to put out before they go. I need them to make a crazy taxi cabinet. <laughs> that was, it's, there was another, was a great game. Crazy taxi is like maybe my favorite video game of all time. <sighs> or at least from that generation. From that like generation. when I had a Dreamcast. There was nothing I liked better wow. than just running around playing Crazy Taxi. Um, Crazy if Taxi they put it out for the game. Series X right now, I'd go buy it. Wow. Uh, what was the... Oh, it was... Did they do Cruisin'? They did Cruisin' USA, didn't they? No, I don't think Cruisin' USA is theirs. I could be wrong. Let's look it up. No, it's Cruising is a, a Midway game. It's Midway. Well, okay, so there are the two big companies, right? It was Sega and Midway and and Banco, Banco, Banco. Yeah, yeah. Those, I mean, those were the or big Bandai. Arcade. Is it Bandai. Banco or Bandai. Right, Bandai? Yeah, those were the big, big arcade companies. That oh God, I spent so many. Money. Oh, they did Frogger too. I forgot about that. Yeah, Frogger or Sega. Uh, oh, I didn't know Frogger was Sega. That's what it says. Turbo. What else did they do? Saxon. Oh my God, we we spent. I so, I I remember one evening, standing in an arcade. We spent hours and hours and hours playing Saxon. Oh, it's a great game. Fantastic. I think I've ever played that. Yeah. Yeah, they got um, they got they got out of the uh, Sega got out of the. They used to have arcades. They used to have, so Sega used to run like full arcades, you know, yeah. like the buildings and, and all that kind of stuff. And I remember going to a Sega arcade. I, I don't remember where it was, but I remember going going into one of those. Um, but they got out of that, and then and then they were just doing the cabinets. But they uh, they sold all that off this week to. Um, to another company so yeah that's really really sad another uh japanese company uh who are they Gai was it geico Gai geico Gai yeah Gai yeah i mean which is the company that they sold the other portion to right they that's who they sold the whole arcade experience to but, yeah yeah but, yeah with with things like dave and busters and stuff starting to become more popular because people are looking for that experience, right? They That's, that's what they want. They want to go have food and hang yeah. out and have a good time and drinks and adult beverage or two and, or two. 
and uh, that's that's what people are looking at. So yeah, I'm a little surprised they're getting out of it, especially in the Japanese market. But it is what it is, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, there's probably a fair amount of maintenance cost that goes along with being in charge of all those cabinets. Well, yeah, cause, so it's it's everything. I, I I know you've been in arcades where like you'll walk in and there's at least two or three machines in every arcade that, that just don't work working or the yep. screen's broken or the button doesn't work and, yep. and that's that stuff's expensive to keep parts and get fixed and and all that kind of stuff so yeah yeah i can understand this is not cost effective they're not going to do it anymore all right well we do a video game review for you um i picked up a game i wasn't going to and then i couldn't help myself <laughs> and uh <laughs> it was that target run wasn't it, it was target it's always target a target did run. You in. it's always a target run that does you in um i picked up pokemon legends uh i don't even know how to pronounce it Ar arceus arceus i don't even know I don't i've know heard will it. say it because he bought it but i couldn't tell you anything past that so in a normal pokemon game you run around and you battle Pokemon to collect them. And you do the same thing in this game, sort of. But it's more of an arcade style game, which is really interesting. So if you're running around and you run into a Pokemon, you actually have to throw the ball at them. You have to target them, select the ball and throw it at them before they run at you. <laughs> and and there are Pokemon that are hostile that oh. you you can't run past them. You have to either defeat them in battle or distract them somehow. Um, there are Pokemon that will run away from you, so you have to sneak up on them before you throw the poke the ball at them. It's actually really fun. I was absolutely amazed at how fun it is. And it made it much more engaging than the normal, I'm going to run around in the grass 37 times until I get run into the Pokemon I want to battle. Um, you don't have to battle them if you don't want to. You know, you can run around the grass, and but you can see them out in the wild. It It's really a lot of fun. They redone it in a way that makes it much more arcade style. And, and I think it's for the better. Really, really enjoyable. I had a great time playing it. Uh, I think I would give it a solid 7 or, seven or 8 out of 10. Okay. Because it's a lot of fun. Um, the story is a little... It's, you know, it's a Pokemon story. You're the trainer, the new trainer. You fell out of the rift in the sky. It's, you know, the whole thing. But uh, Right. But, you know, that's never been their big thing with this. It's got to collect them all and and this makes it a lot more fun to do that so will was shocked when i told him i'd never played a pokemon yeah i was a little shocked when you told me that too you've never played a pokemon game no nah, it's just never been something that spoke to me the closest i got to play, buying a pokemon game and playing was that fighting game that they came out with for the switch um Oh, right. Yeah. Sort well, it's of like, like Pokemon, Pokey EX or po yeah. some Pokemon EX, something like that. Um, yeah. This just never been my thing. I don't know. Hmm. But I, I, you know, I get the fact that they are, I mean, they're beloved games. And the thing that always impresses me about Pokemon is that people are perfectly willing to go back and play like the old, old stuff. Like they will play the stuff that is still on like the DS. Absolutely. Um, I have a, I have a DS. If I go on vacation, that's always one of the things I take. Is your DS? Is the DS. I have in, a DS somewhere. Just in case. And that's one of the games I always oh, take with me. Is Pokemon. This is a DS Lite. Um, I felt like I had a regular DS too. Maybe Will has a DS. And then Will has also absconded with my 3DS and I have no idea where it is. I have the... Uh, what's the one... Uh, mine's blue XL. It came in an XL version. That's the one I got. Is the I also have one of these. Oh, the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, <laughs> those are. Yeah. Man, does anybody? You know what? Nintendo has always made the 
best handhelds. They have. Mm-hmm. I need I need you to buy a Steam a Steam Deck and test it out and tell us if it's. Why do I have to buy the Steam Deck? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> If I buy a Steam Deck, Will is going to run off with it, and I'll never be able to tell anybody if it's any good or not. Yeah, well, uh, there's that. You have no children in the house to run off with I it. Do not. Unless you think your son will come and abscond with it. I don't think he'd take it anywhere. I might not just see it sit, while he's, he's here. He but... just <laughs> might sit on the couch and play it all day. I mean, that's that's fair. Eat me out of the house that and is for the fair. two and a half hours that he's here. But... Oh, <laughs> Uh, right. It's worth it's worth the time. It's worth the time. Absolutely. You know how my parents fix that? They just don't keep any groceries in the house. <laughs> so I can't show up and eat them out of house and home because there's nothing to eat. They will go they, out and bring food say, home. Do they go out all the time? They they go out to eat a lot more. I mean, and I get it. It's just the two of them. There ain't no need in you know cooking a bunch of food for just the two of them. Uh, but they finally, after probably three years of needing a new TV, not a new TV, a new refrigerator, oh, yeah. they finally bought a new refrigerator. It was it was so bad that like we were going out to eat on for Christmas because like there was no need in cooking food. Like where were they going to put it? They didn't have <laughs> a fridge that was suitable for it. And uh, we finally were like, yo, y'all need to buy a new fridge. Buy a new fridge. Buy a new fridge. And they finally did. So there was some food in the house the last time I went home, uh, because they have they now have a proper refrigerator. That's terrible. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. That's a that's a show for us. If you'd like to reach out and contribute to the show in any way, please email us at joystickandmouse at gmail dot com. Uh, Go over to iTunes, give us a five star review. Um, uh, be sure to subscribe, hit subscribe when you're over there. Go to shop at joystickandmouse.com, get one of these exceptional shirts that we have out there. One of our fancy shirts, our fancy shirts. Um, and as always, you can find us at www.joystickandmouse.com. And until next time. Jay Adams. Take it easy. And we'll see you later, folks. Have a good one.